Hey there, it's Clara from AccuPro Academy, and I'm super pumped that you're here today to watch this made easy video all on TCM diagnosis, especially observation. So we're going to go through this video to try to make it easy to observe and use observation as a TCM diagnosis. Before we start, I just wanted to remind you that I have tons and tons of other videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, definitely subscribe if you want to get all the new videos that I post all the time and check out all the other ones that I have. I have tons of resources, PDF courses on my website, acuproacademy.com. So check that out as well. And if you are on Facebook or Instagram, definitely give me a shout out at Acupro Academy. I would love to meet you there as well. So without further ado, let's start it up with observation in TCM diagnosis. So just to recap quickly that the four main methods of diagnosis in TCMs are inquiry, where we ask all our questions and get all the information to be able to figure out the diagnosis, observation, which is the one we're going to talk about today, which is a big one because it includes the tongue, and palpation, which includes the pulse, not today, different video, and auscultation, which is hearing or listening, and olfaction, which is smelling. So those are a little bit smaller. The biggest one I would say that we use in clinical practice or inquiry, observation, and palpation. The other two should not be dismissed. They're just not as big in the, not big play in TCM diagnosis. All right, so let's start it up with observation. So I'm going to start with the five TCM body types. So the five elements have five body types and five personalities. Personalities and body type may not match, okay? You may be a fire personality, but not a fire body type, okay? So if you want more on body type and uh, or personality, definitely check out my website on the resource page at acuproacademy.com. I have a whole article in depth about those uh, body type and uh, about the uh, characteristic of the emotional state of all five element personalities. So having said that, I'll start with the earth per, uh, body type, sorry. So the earth body, body type is the person that's more pear shape. That is definitely bigger on the hips, bigger on the lower leg, bigger on the lower body, and smaller at the top. So the pear shape usually has tendency to have um, issue with water retention, specifically in the lower leg, and circulatory issue in the lower body. So it is really important for them to walk, to do exercise that is gonna bring circulation. So cardiovascular exercise would be good, but probably not high impact, just because people are heavier on the legs, but something that's gonna make like hiking or biking or anything that's gonna be a little bit more cardiovascular without having to have a lot of impact. Those are gonna benefit from, um, the earth type body type would benefit from. The second one that I can talk about is fire. So fire body type is usually people that have smaller hands and smaller feet for their frame. So for example, I'm 5'6", which is about 168 centimeters, and my shoe size in Canada is 7, 7 and a half, and in Europe it would be about a 38, 39. Okay, so I had a girlfriend that was my size, my height was 5'6", or 168 centimeters, and she was size 5 in her feet, which would be about 35 in Europe. So that's really small. So she was definitely fire body type. The fire body type, as you can see here on that picture, is also someone that has a smaller chin and a wider forehead, kind of like a heart-shaped face, right? Kind of like the heart, the fire, it's a heart-shaped face. So uh, this kind of body type does very well in uh, building muscles, having uh, definitely sports that are a little bit more um, short, high intensity. So not long distance necessarily, but more short, higher intensity. So maybe high jumping or uh, long jumping or anything that has to do with fast speed, short. So maybe uh, something like a hundred meter race, right? That would be uh, definitely something short burst of energy is what works well for those uh, body type. What doesn't work as well is endurance or long, um, long, 
um, I guess, exercise or exercise that are endurance-like, right? So marathon, probably not for those people. Um, the metal. So the metal body type is usually the person that is more wider at the shoulder and smaller at the waist and smaller at the legs. So it's kind of like the opposite of the earth, right? The earth is bigger at the lower body. The metal personality is definitely wider shoulder, much more square, much more muscular, but very square face and square shoulders and smaller trimmer waist. So those people, usually, I would say somebody else could look like this is Arnold Schwarzenegger. It would have a definitely a metal body type. Those people do very well in swimming, uh, in anything that involves a lot of upper body, more than lower body. But to balance it up, they obviously need to have um, a well-rounded exercise. Now, they definitely don't do well in running because their upper body is too heavy for their legs and lower body. So it's not what I would recommend for them. The wood body type, as you can see in here, so the wood body type is the person that's very small framed, small boned, and have tendency to naturally, naturally be on the thin side. So more bony, more skinny on the thin side. Um, those people benefit very much from yoga, from very gentle exercise, nothing really strong or high or high impact or uh, long endurance. They need to do very soft, gentle exercise, like I said, like yoga or tai chi, okay? So that would be something I would recommend. And the last one, Mr. Leonardo DiCaprio, uh, water body type are usually a bit rounder. It's very difficult for them to build strong defined muscles because they have tendency to be a little bit more round, a little bit more round around the belly, a little bit more round face. I call them baby face, right? It's the people that age very well because even when they're 40, they still look like they're a kid, they're a child because of course they're the kidney. The kidney is the aging system, is the essence. So the water body type usually has tendency to age quite well in the face and still look like a young person. So um, those people, because they're more round, they have tendency to um, have a bit more water retention, a little bit like the earth, but water retention in general. They do very well in anything that has to do with endurance. So doing long endurance uh, exercise like um, hiking or biking or anything that has to do with long endurance definitely don't do well in short burst of high intensity exercise. All right, so the five body types, to give you an idea, when you observe your patients, figure out what you can help them with. If you see a patient that's got a different body type and they're a very runner, they love to run, but you could see that their body type is going to take so much impact because they're not the right body type for running, um, I would say that it's always good to kind of discuss it with people so we do preventative. The whole idea about TCM is to do preventative medicine. So now let's look at a couple of body types and see what it comes to diagnosis, what we look for. So again, Kira Knightley here, she's the wood body type, which is very skinny, very thin. Um, most people that are very thin, very skinny and TCM are either blood or yin deficient. They're blood deficient if they are very uh, pale and pale tongue and pale face. Um, they're yin deficient if they have tendency to feel more hot at night, have red cheeks or red tongue with no coat, right? So that's how we differentiate between blood or yin deficiency, but very thin, dry body. On the opposite, someone that's overweight to the point of obesity, uh, we look at them with a deficiency in an excess. So someone that is obese has excess phlegm. All this excess fatty tissue is phlegm and TCM. But it also means that the spleen is being depleted for years, specifically if the person has been overeating, if that's the cause, right? Um, so it's usually a spleen sheet deficiency because the digestive system now is very depleted, very weak, and of course cannot transform and transport, and then phlegm starts to set in. So that gives you a little bit of clues when you first meet your patients. Observation skills. <laughs> All right, here is my favorite observation in TCM. It's looking at kidney essence. Do your patients have great kidney essence? Do you have kidney essence that looks strong when you look at yourself or family members or friends? Use your observation skills. 
anywhere you're going. I remember when I was in school, I used to use my observation skills in public transportation. I would sit in the bus and look at people and think, ooh, this person's blood deficient. Ooh, this person has dryness. And, you know, it was so much fun. So definitely use your observation skills and practice them on a regular basis on everybody with kindness in your mind and with uh, lots of love in your heart. So this is interesting. This is obviously great kidney essence for the girl on the on the left and then for the boy or the guy on the right, definitely less great kidney essence. First of all, he's losing his hair. It's thinning out. He looks really tired. His skin looks older. He's not that old, by the way. Um, they're really, really close in age, the two of them. Uh, his teeth, of course, are not straight. They look unhealthy. His whole face and observation to me looks like she looks like she has vitality she has great vitality and it doesn't look like she has a lot of makeup right it's natural vitality and he looks the opposite so he doesn't have great essence no great bone structure no great teeth no great hair she on the opposite has all that and she has big ears which connotate in tcm great kidney essence when we have big ears yay so if you have small ears not as good. <laughs> All right, let's talk about observation of the body colors. So I'm not talking about the tongue, I'm talking about the body colors. The body can be either red, yellow, purple, bluish, or pale. Okay, so let's start with red. If there's redness in the lips or the nose or the eyes or there's red rashes anywhere in the skin, it's either an excess heat or it comes from a yin deficiency, okay? So if you have red lips, it could be that there's excess heat in the stomach because the lips are reflected in the five elements to the stomach and spleen. So if there's, the lips are red, it's an excess heat in the stomach, it could also be a yin deficiency in the stomach if the lips were red and cracked. So that's the difference. And of course, you would have to look at symptoms and as the tongue as well, right? So if there's red eyes, for example, like chronic red sclera of the eyes, it would be that there's probably some liver heat or liver fire that's affecting or heat that's affecting the liver. Does that make sense? So it's kind of our observation skill that we use in that perspective to look at colors, right? Yellow. Yellow palms, I always look at my patient's palm, uh, yellow palms connotate dampness. So it kind of gives you an idea if there's a lot of dampness in that person. Of course, if there's yellow sclera or the eyes, yellow eyes, that's usually a sign of jaundice, right, which affects the liver, and in TCM, jaundice affects liver and spleen, and there's excess damp heat usually. The nails, if the nails are yellow, same idea, right, it is connotating usually jaundice as well. Oozing skin. So, of course, if we see yellow pus, um, yellow, um, um, anything that's oozing and that's yellowish, that's dampness. Make sense? Purple. So, purple is always blood stasis. Purple nails would make liver blood stasis because liver reflects in the nails. Purple lips would be more blood stasis affecting the digestive system, especially the stomach. Purple bruises all over the body, right, have sensitivity to bruise easily. That can come up with a spleen not holding the blood within the blood vessels, which can create bruises. Or if someone has punched you, you have a bruise, and that's blood stasis. It's painful and bruise. <laughs> uh, big blood clots in uh, the menstruation, blood during menstruation, also shows purple blood stasis. Bluish color. Uh, that's usually an excess cold. So usually a lot of time if we have bluish color, we may have bluish purple because if there's excess cold, it creates a congeal, it stops circulation and can create blood stasis. So it's very often we have a bluish purple together when there's excess cold. So it could be acute or chronic, of course. Um, if you have really, really blue lips, that's usually probably because you're really freezing. So maybe you, uh, we see kids often, right? Kids can play in the water, in the ocean, or in the lakes, and they're freezing. Their lips are blue, but they still want to play because, you know, they're having fun. They don't even know they're cold. Um, of course, blue fingers means there is definitely excess yen, excess cold, no circulation. That could be due to um, frostbite. That could be due to Reynolds disease, right? So there's a lot of... Um, possibilities for that. And of course, pale uh, always, always connotate a deficiency. 
And PAO can either be qi deficiency, blood deficiency, or yang deficiency. Usually, if it's um, something that is yang deficiency, you're going to have pale and puffy, like some swelling with it, right, or some shine to it. If it's a blood deficiency, it will be pale, maybe more on the drier side, and qi deficiency could be completely pale. So someone that has pale lips, that's usually, um, I, it could be a spleen qi deficiency. Uh, someone that has very pale blood, um, when they have their menstruation. If it's just pale blood, it's blood deficiency. If it's pale pinkish blood that's very runny and watery, that's more yang deficiency, okay? So, but no matter what, it's either a qi blood or yang deficiency, you need to have all the symptoms and the inquiry, palpation, and all the other methods of diagnosis to figure out which one is more effective. So let's play with what we just saw, right? So if you look at those two actresses, uh, the one on the left is very pale. She's definitely blood deficient. That's very much a pale. Compared to the one that's on the right, she's pale, but you can see it's a very different pale. It's more of a, with a yellow hue to it. So when there is paleness with a yellow hue, that means there's dampness, right? We said yellow is dampness in body skin observation, and pale is deficiency. So this is usually a kidney and spleen deficiency that obviously creates dampness because when spleen she is deficient, there's always dampness that occurs. So that's the difference between the two of them. Now let's see what do we see. So this person, if you look at her, what do you see? Red cheeks, that's a yin deficiency, and definitely more reddish lips. Her lips are pink, but definitely dark pink, more on the red, right? So it's either excess heat or yin deficiency, but because of the red cheeks, I would say it's more of a yin deficiency. Make sense? This person, what do you see? Purple, right? Purple eyes or purple shade around the eyes, purple lips, purple face. Definitely it's more on the purple side, which is more blood stagnation. The lips, I would say, are a bit purple pale, so there could be some blood deficiency as well. We need to look at the tongue to see if it correlates, but there's definitely some blood stasis. Observation of the area of the eyes. So that's interesting. I don't use this in clinical practice a lot, but as you can see, each area of the eye represents or reflects different organ in the body, TCM organ in the body, right? So the one I use the most is the sclera, or the white of the eye, which represents the lung. So if the sclera is really, really red, or if there's issues, then there's issue with the lung, right? Lung heat, it could be. But because it's affecting also the eyes, and the eyes is always the liver, then I would say there's also liver heat. So this is a, if the red sclera, usually that's lung and liver heat. Tells you, give you some idea, right? What I use a lot more in observation is the upper lid, represents the spleen, spleen, sorry, and the lower lid, the stomach. So if it's puffy on the lower lid, there is definitely some dampness affecting the stomach. If it's puffy or heavy on the upper lid, it's a spleen issue. So often, sometimes people have droopy eyelid, the upper eyelid that's droopy, that's usually a spleen she's sinking. But there's people that also have very heavy eyelid or puffy one, and that's a spleen in if it's the lower stomach. If there's a little bit of redness on the inner canthus or the inner part of the eye, that is usually heat or fire in the heart. So that gives you an idea, right? All those little observations. So let's put this a little bit in practice. Let's look at circle under the eyes, right? So if we look at um, those two people, she has definitely black circle under her eyes. He has more purplish circle under his eyes, right? So hers are more black. More black means kidney. It's affecting the kidney. There's a kidney deficiency. Here's a more purple. So that's more of a blood stasis. That's definitely affecting um, his lower lid area. That's almost purple. So there's got to be something with the stomach as well. Puffy eyelid, like I said, this one, really the lower one, right? You can see that. It's super puffy on the lower part. And so that's dampness specifically affecting the stomach. And this one, if I look at observation, she definitely has a greasy T-zone. So her nose, her forehead is very greasy. So there's definitely some excess dampness of phlegm that's affecting her. And the red cheeks, right? So there's some yin deficiency from the red cheeks, but there's definitely also a T-zone. So she has yin deficiency 
and some dampness or phlegm. Again, while you do the rest of your diagnosis, you can correlate it, all this to your observation skills. Okay, so let's look at another eye. This is really red, right? So you can see the inner canthus is very red. So that's hard fire. And the whole sclera is red, meaning that lung has fire or heat and liver has fire or heat. It definitely looks like an infection, right? Which makes sense, which affects liver, lung, and heart in that perspective. This one is jaundice. We could see it's the yellow sclera, very yellow. That's a jaundice that affects liver. Of course, we understand that. Yellow nails. So again, that's jaundice-like, right? It's really bad for the livers. Um, it's really correlates to a damp and heat in the liver, which is usually jaundice. Compared to this, this uh, these nails have ridges and they are very, very, very pale. So that's more of a liver blood deficiency. Let's look at lips, beautiful lips. So I don't know if those are naturals, but I wanted to try to give you an idea. So I wanted to kind of practice. What do you see there for the color? This to me is a purple, pale kind of lip. So it's lips that are lavender. So purple is blood stasis, pale is blood deficiency usually. So that's a blood deficiency in blood stasis, which is very common to see in clinical practice. Those lips are red. We agree, a little cracked, uh, definitely red, right? So if they're cracked, it could be that it's a yin deficiency because they're cracked, so there's not enough fluid. Uh, it could be excess heat that's leading to yin deficiency. This one's definitely purple and dry, right? So we have definitely the dryness because the lips are cracked and the purplish, which makes it blood stasis and some body fluid deficiency or some excess dryness in the body. Those are definitely body fluid deficiency. Super cracked, super dry, as you can see. So there's body fluid deficiency and the lips are very, very pale. So it's either a chi deficiency, a yang deficiency, or a blood deficiency. I would say they're a little bit more puffy. So I would say that it could be yang deficiency, but of course we need more of a diagnosis to be able to continue to do that. All right, observation of the nose in Chinese medicine. We go through every little area. Um, as you can see, a dry nose is usually heat invading the large intestine or stomach. Why not the lung, right? Uh, if it's a dry nose, it's the skin that's dry, and usually it's affecting the meridian. And the stomach and large intestine meridian go by the area of the nose. That's why. If we have clear discharge, like runny nose, post-nasal drip, and it's just water coming out of your faucet of your nose, that is definitely excess cold. If we have yellow discharge, that's excess heat. Okay, so remember that yellow is dampness on the body, on the skin, but not in mucus. Okay, yellow in mucus or on the tongue coating will be more heat. That's the thing that all my students make mistake. Yellow palm would be dampness, right? Yellow color on the skin, like oozing discharge, is definitely a bit of dampness. But if it's discharge of the nose or mucus, it's always heat when it's yellow and it's cold when it's clear. Okay, let's not mix them up. A blue nose usually uh, affects the stomach or the large intestine and create and is creating or created by uh, abdominal pain. So it's acute, usually abdominal pain. And a red nose, red nose like Rudolf the reindeer, uh, is usually long heat or excess heat in the lung. All right, I know you've been waiting for this. The big, big part of TCM is tongue diagnosis, right? Chinese medicine is all about looking at the tongue. So I do all my inquiry first while I do my observation and my inquiry at the same time. And then I will look at the tongue, which always should reflect what you did with your inquiry, hopefully, right? This is a big part of TCM. When patients ask me, why do you look at my tongue? I always say the following. Well, Chinese medicine is very ancient. It's been used for a long time. And way back then, there was no MRI, no imagery, no nothing that we were able, that we were able to look inside your body, right? We couldn't do a blood test. We couldn't do all the stuff that we have today, which we have all those tools today. But sometimes looking at the tongue can tell us to go look further into those tools because something is wrong. So it kind of tells us clues of what's happening inside the body because the body and the internal part of the body reflects on the tongue. 
And that's why we look at it. <laughs> All right. So tongue observation is one of the major pillars of TCM diagnosis, right? And it is quite reliable compared to the pulse, which is not always the case. Tongue observation is based on the following four items. First, we look at the body color. The body color indicates the condition of blood, chi, and the yin organs, which are heart, liver, kidney, spleen, lung, right? Pericardium. Hopefully we, we know that. The body shape. So we look at the shape of the tongue, which indicates the state of blood and nutritive chi or yin chi. Y-I-N-G, yin chi. The coating, we look at the coating of the tongue because it indicates the state of the young organs and the pathogens, right? Pathogens are heat and cold and dampness, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and the young organ, you know what they are. The moisture of the tongue. We want to see if the tongue is dry or overly wet, and that indicates, of course, the state of the body fluids. So this uh, little tongue map is giving you an idea where each organ is mapped out on the tongue. So if you look at your trunk and your own trunk, uh, the heart is at the top with the lung, right? And then the spleen and stomach in TCM represents digestion, so they're in the middle. On the side, we have the liver and gallbladder. And then at the bottom, below the belly button, you have all your other organs. So you have the intestines, the bladder, and the kidney. So it's kind of like representing uh, your trunk of all your organs, right? The heart part is called the tip of the tongue. The lung part is called the front of the tongue. The spleen and stomach is called the middle. The liver gallbladder is called the sides, and the kidney bladder and both intestines are called the root or the back of the tongue. As you can see on the picture on the right, it literally separates the lower jowl from the middle jowl for the upper jowl. The upper jowl, the upper jowl is the lung and heart. The middle jowl is spleen and stomach and liver gallbladder. Sometimes in some text, um, they will put liver and gallbladder in the lower jowl. So some students don't agree of where lower jowl and liver gallbladder if they are located in the middle jaw or lower jaw. And of course, the lower jaw is the intestines, the kidney, and the bladder. So the area will tell us what's going on, right? If we have a certain color in an area of the tongue, then it will tell us what's going on with that organ. So let's start with the body color. We said we look at four things, so let's look at the first one. The five body colors on the tongue are red, crimson, which is deep, deep red, purple, blue, and pale. So a lot of similarity with the body colors, but a little bit of distinguish it, right? So we distinguish it from the body colors. So if we have a red tongue, it is excess heat or yin deficiency. How do we know the difference? If it is excess heat, we would have a coat on the tongue, a yellow coat on the tongue. If it was yin deficiency, we would have no coat on the tongue and it probably would have some kind of crack or dryness. Crimson is that deep, deep red, like a dark wine, red wine, of course. Uh, that can indicate fire or body fluid exhaustion. So it could also be that the fire has created body fluid exhaustion, right? Too much heat dries the body fluid. So... If we see this, how do we know the difference? Obviously, body fluid exhaustion, they'd be very cracked, very, very, very deep cracked in the tongue, which would show like very depleted body fluid. With fire, we would see more strawberry prickles and probably uh, a deep red, maybe a couple of cracks at the beginning, but not that much, right? Purple, of course, is blood stasis. I always say to my students, P and P, purple and pain, we present blood stasis. Blood stasis always creates pain and purple color. Blue or bluish tongue is excess cold or excess yin. And pale tongue is either a chi deficiency, blood deficiency, or yang deficiency. How do we know the difference? If it is a chi deficiency, the tongue is pale. If it's a blood deficiency, the tongue is pale and thin. The shape of the tongue is very thin, skinny, right? If it's a yang deficiency, it's pale and fat or swollen, the opposite, okay? So chi deficiency is pale, blood deficiency pale and thin, and yang deficiency pale and swollen, got it? So obviously, if we see red tip of the tongue, that's excess heat in the heart, 
or yin deficiency in the heart, right? If we see purple sides of the tongue, that's a liver blood stasis, okay? So we always have to look at which area, and we're going to practice this in a minute. All right, so let's look at the color of the coat. We have to look at the coat in TCM. So the first one is we're going to look at the body fluid, right? I was saying we look at the moisture of the coat. So the moisture of the tongue, either it is very dry, which could be, like we said earlier, fire or body fluid deficiency. If it was really, really red, uh, it's probably fire. If it's really, really cracked and dry, really, really cracked, that's a body fluid deficiency. If we have a greasy tongue coating or oily tongue coating, shiny tongue coating, that's either excess damp or excess phlegm. Okay, so it's the opposite, either dry or damp, right? Colors of the coat. So the coat should not have a color, it should be transparent and be a little moist on the tongue, but not overly so. So if we have a yellow tongue coating, that's excess heat. So remember, yellow palms was excess dampness, but yellow tongue coating is excess heat, right? The tongue coating yellow makes a difference. It is not dampness. Yellow coat means heat. Now, if it was yellow and greasy, it would be damp heat, okay? So if the tongue coating is white, uh, the, thick, the thicker the coat, the worse the problem is, of course. If it's a thin white coat, it's not as bad. That's usually excess cold. Now, if it's grayish or black, it's usually a very serious, deep-seated illness. It could be cancer. It could be something that's very, very deep-seated. So that's something that you have to really send the patient for more tests and look into it very much more deeply, right? So that gives you an idea. So again, you can mix them up, right? So if I have a yellowish tongue coating that is really dry, that, then that's probably an excess fire, right? Because it's excess heat, the yellow coat. And it's probably a red tongue with it. So that would be excess fire. So let's look at so, some tongues uh, to kind of give us an idea, right? That's the best thing to do. This is the closest picture that I could get for a healthy tongue because it's pink. It's got a bit of a moisture coat, but not overly so. And it's not cracked and it's got a good size and good shape. The first one on the top left has many, many cracks as you can see, this is definitely a body fluid deficiency. I mean, it's really, really cracked. As you can see, it's probably coming from over uh, too much heat because it is red, right? The one on the top right is uh, a little bit more of a yin deficiency. It has cracks already, and you can see this is the tongue shape. We're talking about the shape of the tongue, okay? Remember, this is the shape. So you can see the small cracks. That's a yin deficiency, but having said that, the tongue itself is purple, right? So there's some blood stasis, but the crack indicates the yin deficiency because there's small cracks compared to the body fluid deficiency, which were big, many cracks. Looking underneath the tongue. So on the left here, we have engorged veins. Those are the two veins underneath the tongues, and we actually have uh, two acupuncture points there, right? We can bleed those veins. If they are very engorged, that's a blood stasis. If you can't see them at all, that's a blood deficiency. If you could see just normally a little bit, then that's fine. Strawberry prickles. You can see on this tongue, it almost looks like it's a strawberry, right? Strawberry prickles indicate toxic heat. So kind of raised on the tongue, right? Swollen tongue. And teeth marks. You can see the teeth marks on the side, right? You can see this is a really pale, swollen tongue. So that's a young deficiency, right? Young deficiency usually creates dampness. So swollen means young deficiency with dampness. And of course, you can see the teeth marks on the side as well. Teeth marks are usually a spleen tree deficiency. So this could be a spleen young deficiency. But it's affecting the whole tongue. And it's a bit of a crack too. Can you see that? So remember fat tongue, young deficiency. Thin tongue, on the other hand, is a blood or yin deficiency. So if it's pale and thin, it's a blood deficiency. If it's red with no coat and thin, that's a yin deficiency. And the one in the middle with the really pronounced teeth marks, teeth marks are definitely a spleen she deficiency due to stress. The person is worried, overthinking, and they're constantly, constantly clenching their jaw, which creates the teeth marks. And the last one in the middle is deviated tongue. So deviated tongue naturally comes out to the side. 
that is internal wind. It could be a precursor to stroke, uh, but it definitely is internal wind. So that's something to look for, uh, you know, to be aware of because that could create some more issue. All right, so that was all the tongue, shape, color of the body, color of the coat, and the moisture. So let's start practicing. So Rihanna there on the left side has definitely a pale tongue that has teeth marks all over the side. So she's definitely spleen deficient, spleen she deficiency probably. Um, on the right side, Britney Spears, definitely more purple with a red tip, right? So she does have blood stasis, a um, little bit of a white coat over it and some red tip, which means probably some heart heat or heart fire or heart yen deficiency. Miley Cyrus in the center, wow, is right. <laughs> that tongue for a young lady is definitely unhealthy. You can see the coat is so thick. It's yellowish. It's got lots of heat in it. We can't even see the literally the color of the tongue because the coat is so thick. There's a lot of toxicities in there. And uh, it'd be interesting to analyze this person. <laughs> Let's try somebody else. Oh, Gene Simmons. He's got a long tongue. Long tongue means great kidney, by the way, so that's great. His tongue definitely is redder at the tip. We can see that, and he has a yellowish coat at the back, which indicates heat at the back or at the root of the tongue, which means heat either in the intestine, bladder, or kidney. It's definitely red at the tip and at the front, so there's some excess heat in the heart or lung. Avril Lavigne, her tongue is deep, deep red. This is that deep red we were talking about. Uh, definitely, so that's uh, crimson red, so excess fire, um, probably for her because I don't see the cracks. So it is a little bit of purplish in there, so there's some stagnation, but it's mostly deep red. All right, so here's a typical pale with teeth marks. That's a typical spleen sheet deficiency tongue because it is pale and it has teeth marks. Okay, so this one has sores on the tongue. As you can see, strawberry prickles, which is toxicity. Nice crack in the stomach area, uh, which is body fluid being affected. So some yin deficiency maybe in the stomach. Lots of coating, right? You can see the coating is very yellow and it's going to the root and to the center. So lots of heat in the center and in the root of the tongue as well. I think the side of the tongue has a bit of reddish on one side, but pale on the other side, if you can look at this, right? So lots of problem for the sport person, as we can see. This is a purple tongue, right? So we got the purple and we got the teeth marks. So purple is blood stasis. The teeth marks are a spleen chi deficiency, specifically liver overact on spleen. And then there's a bit of a crack in the center, which means some yin deficiency is coming to uh, be into play in the stomach. And the tip, it's starting to be red a little bit, right? So the heart may have some heat in it as well. This is a typical yin deficiency tongue. It's cracked, it's red, it's definitely a yin deficiency tongue, and it's going towards body fluid deficiency as well because it's quite cracked, right? Whoa, so this one looks like a brain, right? My students, every time I put this up, they just go, what? Uh, it is so cracked. It is very, very cracked. So body fluid, very deficient. But at the same time, it's swollen. So there's a kidney young or there's a young deficiency in general because there's lots of swelling and it's so pale, right? So it's pale and swollen, which means there's young deficiency. At the same time, there's body fluid, super deficient. So this is very difficult to treat because there's so many issues and issues that are opposite. Right? Having young deficiency usually creates swelling and dampness, but there's also body fluid deficiency that are not being properly metabolized. This tongue has a great coat that's yellowish coat, right? You can see that in the center and at the root specifically. It is purplish in general and red at the tip. So heart definitely has some heat in there or yin deficiency, probably excess heat because there's excess heat due to the coating that's yellowish. And this one, so this is a smoker's tongue, right? So the coat you could see is brownish dark, but it is a smoker's tongue. You could see that on the teeth. So this person has smoked a lot, and that's why there's that color on the crack. Smoke always makes someone become yin deficient and body fluid deficient. So you can see it's very cracked, and it's going pretty far into the lung area, right? The lungs are, are located at the front of the tongue, and that you could see is affecting the lung because it's very deep cracked at that area. So and it's going to get worse and worse. So 
Uh, that's definitely a smoker's tongue. It's got a bit of red tip as well, right? And you can see a little bit of yellow coat on the side for the heat and, of course, uh, in the center of the crack. All right, there you have it. Quick, easy way to do TCM diagnosis observation. You can find more on my Facebook page. I really post there every day at 6 p.m. Pacific Surrender Time. I'm on Instagram if you want to give me a shout out and follow me there. I post in there as well daily and on stories. And of course, my YouTube channel where I have tons of videos that you can watch and hopefully are useful, entertaining, and fun and inspiring for you to, you know, love TCM even more. I have tons of free courses and PDF and treatment protocol on my website at youproacademy.com. So give me a shout out there as well. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. I would love to hear from you anytime. So don't be shy. Say hello, contact me. And no matter what, keep rocking it using TCM.